Section 44 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. From To Candy Angelica. Take it in April, boil it in water till it be tender, then take it up and drain it from the water very well, then scrape the outside of it and dry it in a clean cloth and lay it in the syrup and let it lie in three or four days and cover it close the syrup must be strong of sugar and keep it hot a good while and let it not boil after it is heated a good while lay it upon a pie plate and so let it dry keep it near the fire lest it dissolve to preserve cherries take their weight in sugar before you stone them when stoned make your syrup then put in your cherries let them boil slowly at the first till they be thoroughly warmed then boil them as fast as you can when they are boiled clear put in the jelly with almost the weight in sugar strew the sugar on the cherries for the colouring you must be ruled by your eye to a pound of sugar put a jack of water strew the sugar on them before they boil and put in the juice of currants soon after they boil to barrel morello cherries to one pound of full ripe cherries picked from the stems and wiped with a cloth take half a pound of double refined sugar and boil it to a candy height but not a high one put the cherries into a small barrel then put in the sugar by a spoonful at a time till it is all in and roll them about every day till they have done fermenting then bung it up close and they will be fit for use in a month it must be an iron hooped barrel to dry pear plums take two pounds of pear plums to one pound of sugar stone them and fill every one with sugar lay them in an earthen pot put to them as much water as will prevent burning them then set them in an oven after bread is drawn let them stand till they be tender then put them into a sieve to drain well from the syrup then set them in an oven again until they be a little dry then smooth the skins as well as you can and so fill them then set them in the oven again to harden then wash them in water scalding hot and dry them very well then put them in the oven again very cool to blue them put them between two pewter dishes and set them in the oven the filling for the aforesaid plums take the plums wipe them prick them in the seams put them in a pitcher and set them in a little boiling water let them boil very tender then pour most of the liquor from them then take off the skins and the stones to a pint of the pulp a pound of sugar well dried in the oven then let it boil till the scum rises which take off very clean and put into earthen plates and dry it in an oven and so fill the plums to candy cassia take as much of the powder of brown cassia as will lie upon two broad shillings with what musk and ambergris you think fitting the cassia and perfume must be powdered together then take a quarter of a pound of sugar and boil it to a candy height then put in your powder and mix it well together and pour it in pewter saucers or plates which must be buttered very thin and when it is cold it will slip out the cassia is to be bought at london sometimes it is in powder and sometimes in a hard lump to make caraway cakes take two pounds of white flour and two pounds of coarse loaf sugar well dried and fine sifted after the flour and sugar are sifted and weighed then mingle them together sift the flour and sugar together through a hair sieve into the bowl you use it in to them you must have two pounds of good butter eighteen eggs leaving out eight of the whites 
to these you must have four ounces of candied orange five or six ounces of caraway comfits you must first work the butter with rose water till you can see none of the water and your butter must be very soft then put in flour and sugar a little at a time and likewise your eggs but you must beat your eggs very well with ten spoonfuls of sack so you must put in each as you think fit keeping it constantly beating with your hand till you have put it into the hoop for the oven do not put in your sweetmeats and seeds till you are ready to put it into your hoops you must have three or four doubles of cap paper under the cakes and butter the paper and hoop you must sift some fine sugar upon your cake when it goes into the oven to preserve pippins in slices when your pippins are prepared but not cored cut them in slices and take the weight of them in sugar put to your sugar a pretty quantity of water let it melt and skim it let it boil again very high then put them into the syrup when they are clear lay them in shallow glasses in which you mean to serve them up then put into the syrup a candied orange peel cut in little slices very thin and lay about the pippin cover them with syrup and keep them about the pippin sack cream like butter take a quart of cream boil it with mace put to it six egg yolks well beaten so let it boil up then take it off the fire and put in a little sack and turn it then put it in a cloth and let the whey run from it then take it out of the cloth and season it with rose water and sugar being very well broken with a spoon serve it up in the dish and pink it as you would do a dish of butter so send it in with cream and sugar barley cream take a quart of french barley boil it in three or four waters till it be pretty tender then set a quart of cream on the fire with some mace and nutmeg when the water begins to boil drain out the barley from it put in the cream and let it boil till it be pretty thick and tender then season it with sugar and salt when it is cold serve it up almond butter take a quart of cream put in some mace whole and a quartered nutmeg the yolks of eight eggs well beaten and three quarters of a pound of almonds well blanched and beaten extremely small with a little rose water and sugar and put all these together set them on the fire and stir them till they begin to boil then take it off and you will find it a little cracked so lay a strainer in the cullender and pour it into it and let it drain a day or two till you see it is firm like butter then run it through a cullender then it will be like little comfits and so serve it up sugar cakes take a pound and a half of very fine flour one pound of cold butter half a pound of sugar work all these well together into a paste then roll it with the palms of your hands into balls and cut them with a glass into cakes lay them in a sheet of paper with some flour under them to bake them you may make tumblets only blanch in almonds and beat them small and lay them in the midst of a long piece of paste and roll it round with your fingers and cast them into knots in what fashion you please prick them and bake them sugar cakes another way take half a pound of fine sugar searced and as much flour two eggs beaten with a little rose water a piece of butter about the bigness of an egg work them well together till they be a smooth paste then make them into cakes working every one with the palms of your hands then lay them in plates rubbed over with a little butter so bake them in an oven little more than warm you may make knots of the same the cakes are made of but in the mingling you must put in a few caraway seeds when they are wrought to paste 
roll them with the ends of your finger into small rolls and make it into knots lay them upon pie plates rubbed with butter and bake them clouted cream take four quarts of new milk from the cow and put it in a broad earthen pan and let it stand till the next day then put it over a very slow fire for half an hour make it nearly hot to set the cream then put it away till it is cold and take the cream off and beat it smooth with a spoon it is accounted in the west of england very fine for tea or coffee or to put over fruit tarts or pies quince cream take your quinces and put them in boiling water unpaired boil them a pace uncovered lest they discolour when they are boiled pare them beat them very tender with sugar then take cream and mix it till it be pretty thick if you boil your cream with a little cinnamon it will be better but let it be cold before you put it to your quince citron cream take a quart of cream and boil it with three pennyworth of good clear isinglass which must be tied up in a piece of thin tiffany put in a blade or two of mace strongly boiled in your cream and isinglass till the cream be pretty thick sweeten it to your taste with perfumed hard sugar when it is taken off the fire put in a little rose water to your taste then take a piece of your green precious citron and cut it in little bits the breadth of point dales and about half as long and the cream being first put into dishes when it is half cold put in your citron so as it may but sink from the top that it may not be seen and may lie before it be at the bottom if you wash your citron before in rose water it will make the colour better and fresher so let it stand till the next day where it may get no water and where it may not be shaken cream of apples quince gooseberries prunes or raspberries take to every quart of cream four eggs being first well beat and strained and mix them with a little cold cream and put it to your cream being first boiled with whole mace keep it stirring till you find it begins to thicken at the bottom and sides your apples quinces and berries must be tenderly boiled so as they will crush in the pulp then season it with rose water and sugar to your taste putting it into dishes and when they are cold if there be any rose water and sugar which lies waterish at the top let it be drained out with a spoon this pulp must be made ready before you boil the cream and when it is boiled cover over your pulp a pretty thickness with your egg cream which must have a little rose water and sugar put to it sugar loaf cream take a quarter of a pound of hartshorn and put it to a pottle of water and set it on the fire in a pipkin covered till it be ready to seethe then pour off the water and put a pottle of water more to it and let it stand simmering on the fire till it be consumed to a pint and with it two ounces of isinglass washed in rose water which must be put in with the second water then strain it and let it cool then take three pints of cream and boil it very well with a bag of nutmeg cloves cinnamon and mace then take a quarter of a pound of jordan almonds and lay them one night in cold water to blanch and when they are blanched let them lie two hours in cold water then take them out and dry them in a clean linen cloth and beat them in a marble mortar with fair water or rose water beat them to a very fine pulp then take some of the aforesaid cream well warmed and put the pulp by degrees into it straining it through a cloth with the back of a spoon till all the goodness of the almonds be strained out into the cream then season the cream with rose water and sugar 
then take the aforesaid jelly warm it till it dissolves and season it with rose water and sugar and a grain of amber grease or musk if you please then mix your cream and jelly together very well and put it into glasses well warmed like sugar loaves and let it stand all night then put them out upon a plate or two or a white china dish and stick the cream with peony kernels or serve them in glasses one on every trencher conserve of roses boiled take red roses take off all the whites at the bottom or elsewhere take three times the weight of them in sugar put to a pint of roses a pint of water skim it well shred your roses a little before you put them into water cover them and boil the leaves tender in the water and when they are tender put in your sugar keep them stirring lest they burn when they are tender and the syrup be consumed put them up and so keep them for your use how to make orange biscuits pay your oranges not very thick put them into water but first weigh your peels let it stand over the fire and let it boil till it be very tender then beat it in a marble mortar till it be a very fine smooth paste to every ounce of peels put two ounces and a half of double refined sugar well searced mix them well together with a spoon in the mortar then spread it with a knife upon pie plates and set it in an oven a little warm or before the fire when it feels dry upon the top cut it into what fashion you please and turn them into another plate and set them in a stove till they be dry where the edges look rough when it is dry they must be cut with a pair of scissors how to make yellow varnish take a quart of spirit of wine and put to it eight ounces of sandarac shake it half an hour next day it will be fit for use but strain it first take lamp black and put in your varnish about the thickness of a pancake mix it well but stir it not too fast then do it eight times over and let it stand still the next day then take some burnt ivory and oil of turpentine as fine as butter then mix it with some of your varnish till you have varnished it fit for polishing then polish it with tripoli in fine flour then lay it on the wood smooth with one of the brushes then let it dry and do it so eight times at the least when it is very dry lay on your varnish that is mixed and when it is dry polish it with a wet cloth dipped in tripoli and rub it as hard as you would do platters how to make a pretty varnish to colour little baskets bowls or any board where nothing hot is set on take either red black or white wax which colour you want to make to every two ounces of sealing wax one ounce of spirit of wine pound the wax fine then sift it through a fine lawn sieve till you have made it extremely fine put it into a large phial with the spirits of wine shake it let it stand within the air of the fire forty-eight hours shaking it often then with a little brush rub your baskets all over with it let it dry and do it over a second time and it makes them look very pretty how to clean gold or silver lace take alabaster finely beaten and searced and put it into an earthen pipkin and set it upon a chafing dish of coals and let it boil for some time stirring it often with a stick first when it begins to boil it will be very heavy when it is enough you will find it in the stirring very light then take it off the fire lay your lace upon a piece of flannel and strew your powder upon it knock it well in with a hard cloth brush when you think it is enough brush the powder out with a clean brush how to make sweet powder for clothes take orris roots 
two pounds and a half of lignum rhodicum six ounces of scraped cypress roots three ounces of damask roses carefully dried a pound and a half of benjamin four ounces and a half of storax two ounces and a half of sweet marjoram three ounces of labdanum one ounce and a dram of calamus aromaticus and one dram of muscods six drams of lavender and flowers and melilot flowers if you please to clean white satins flowered silks with gold and silver in them take stale bread crumbled very fine mixed with powder blue rub it very well over the silk or satin then shake it well and with clean soft cloths dust it well if any gold or silver flowers afterwards take a piece of crimson in grain velvet and rub the flowers with it to keep arms iron or steel from rusting take the filings of lead or dust of lead finely beaten in an iron mortar putting to it oil of spike which will make the iron smell well and if you oil your arms or anything that is made of iron or steel you may keep them in moist airs from rusting the jews way to pickle beef which will go good to the west indies and keep a year good in the pickle and with care will go to the east indies take any piece of beef without bones or take the bones out if you intend to keep it above a month take mace cloves nutmeg and pepper and juniper berries beat fine and rub the beef well mix salt and jamaica pepper and bay leaves let it be well seasoned let it lie in this seasoning a week or ten days throw in a good deal of garlic and shallot boil some of the best white wine vinegar lay your meat in a pan or good vessel for the purpose with the pickle and when the vinegar is quite cold pour it over cover it close if it is for a voyage cover it with oil and let the cooper hoop up the barrel very well this is a good way in a hot country where meat will not keep then it must be put into the vinegar directly with the seasoning then you may either roast or stew it but it is best stewed and add a good deal of onion and parsley chopped fine some white wine a little ketchup truffles and morels a little good gravy a piece of butter rolled in flour or a little oil in which the meat and onions ought to stew a quarter of an hour before the other ingredients are put in then put all in and stir it together and let it stew till you think it is enough this is a good pickle in a hot country to keep beef or veal that is dressed to eat cold how to make cider after all your apples are bruised take half your quantity and squeeze them and the juice you press from them pour upon the others half bruised but not squeezed in a tub for the purpose having a tap at the bottom let the juice remain upon the apples three or four days then pull out your tap and let your juice run into some other vessel set under the tub to receive it and if it runs thick as at the first it will pour it upon the apples again till you see it run clear and as you have a quantity put it into your vessel but do not force the cider but let it drop as long as it will of its own accord having done this after you perceive that the sides begin to work take a quantity of isinglass an ounce will serve forty gallons infuse this in some of the cider till it be dissolved put to an ounce of isinglass a quart of cider and when it is so dissolved pour it into the vessel and stop it close for two days or something more then draw off the cider into another vessel this do so often till you perceive your cider to be free from all manner of sediment that may make it ferment and fret itself after christmas you may boil it 
you may by pouring water on the apples and pressing them make a pretty small cider if it be thick and muddy by using icing glass you may make it as clear as the rest you must dissolve the icing glass over the fire till it be jelly for fining cider take two quarts of skim milk four ounces of icing glass cut the icing glass in pieces and work it lukewarm in the milk over the fire and when it is dissolved then put it cold into the hogshead of cider and take a long stick and stir it well from top to bottom for half a quarter of an hour after it has fined take ten pounds of raisins of the sun two ounces of turmeric half an ounce of ginger beaten then take a quantity of raisins and grind them as you do mustard seed in a bowl with a little cider and so the rest of the raisins then sprinkle the turmeric and ginger amongst it then put all into a fine canvas bag and hang it in the middle of the hogshead close and let it lie after the cider has stood thus a fortnight or a month then you may bottle it at your pleasure End of section 44